Corporate funding for Nova Science Now is provided by the following. Foundation funding is provided by. Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Welcome to a new season of Nova Science Now. Now, I'm an ordinary guy, and that means, of course, I'm made up of ordinary matter, basically atoms. And when we gaze out into space, everything we see, galaxies, stars, is also ordinary, made of atoms. But a, a lot, lot of scientists, scientists say there's, there's something, something else in the universe that's not, not ordinary. ordinary. Wait, who said that? And by the way, this seems, seems to be way more of this weird stuff than ordinary, ordinary guys, guys like you. you. Watch it. And even though it's invisible, it's getting harder and harder to ignore. Every day, a crew squeezes into an 80-year-old elevator in Minnesota and commutes to work a half a mile down into the depths of an abandoned mine. They're not searching for gold or diamonds. Instead, they're mining for something even more coveted and harder to find. Something called dark matter. Dark matter is one of the biggest mysteries. Dark matter is everywhere. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for the dark matter. Life wouldn't be possible. The problem is we have no clue what the dark matter is. We know it's out there, and we just have to find it. One of the people now trying to find dark matter is physicist Tali Figueroa. Discovering dark matter is going to be one of the greatest um, finds of the century. So they really mine iron in this place. His search takes place a half mile underground, half mile where this old iron mine has been transformed into a cavernous space age physics lab. When I visited, I didn't notice any dark matter, but I did see quite a bit of dead matter. Whoa, what is this thing? That's a bat. It doesn't look very alive. Well, it probably isn't. Whoa, there's one. Yeah. Another, another. They're all over the place. That's nasty. It is kind of. Nasty. So that doesn't creep you out? You get used to it. OK. <laughs> Down here, surrounded by the dead bats, Tali and his colleagues monitor and care for a complex contraption, specially designed to detect particles of dark matter. So this is it, huh? Yep. This elaborate all endeavor is all to solve a mystery that's been plaguing astrophysicists for more than 70 years. Okay, yep. It might seem bizarre, and even a bit crazy, but there's a chance that most of the matter in the universe is not stars or planets or gas or anything familiar to us but is in the form of some mysterious, invisible substance. We've labeled it dark matter. But why do we think it exists at all? It comes down to gravity and speed. Ever since Isaac Newton, we've known that it's gravity that holds objects in orbit, just as the sun holds Earth and the rest of the planets. The stronger the gravity pulling it inward, the faster an object can go and stay in orbit. It's kind of like spinning a heavy ball around. The harder you pull on the ball, the faster the ball will travel. If the ball gets moving too fast, even a strong guy like this has got to let go. The faster you want something to go, like, you know, David throwing his slingshot, the more you have to pull on it. And the thing that's pulling on something to make it orbit is gravity. Where does gravity come from? Well, we know it can be things with mass, like stars, houses, planets, trains, clouds, jellyfish. They all have gravity. So in the universe, the more stuff, the more gravity, and the faster objects can move and remain in their orbits. Problem is, when we look out beyond our solar system, like at stars orbiting within galaxies, or galaxies moving within galaxy clusters, they're all orbiting faster than we'd expect. The 
speed at which the stars are going around at is too fast. You would expect that it should just escape, but those stars don't escape, they're still going around. There's got to be a lot of gravity holding them all together, but apparently there's not enough matter to account for it. And there's not enough stuff. There's just not enough stuff to keep them all going around each other. Regardless of how we probe the cosmos for this missing matter, using visible light, radio waves, x-rays, we still come up short. Either we've got the laws of gravity completely wrong, or there's got to be more stuff. Actually, we need about five times more stuff. It's stuff we can't see. But what exactly is it? <laughs> what is dark matter? What is the dark matter? Yeah, that is a <laughs> big question. We don't know what it is. It's completely invisible. It's dark. It doesn't glow. So whatever the dark matter is, we can't point a telescope up and actually see it. It sure ain't made of atoms. Everything around us that we can see and touch, ordinary matter, is made of atoms. But one thing we know is, dark matter is not ordinary. We know it's not ordinary matter, because ordinary matter has this whole other variety of interactions. It has electric fields and magnetic fields. It emits light. One idea is, since it's not made of ordinary atoms, dark matter might be made of some exotic particle. Right now, physicists around the world are racing to build a detector sensitive enough to capture one so they can figure out exactly what it is. Eyes working fine. But how do you catch a particle that's so shy? The fundamental problem is that this dark matter does not interact with matter very much. And so in order to detect it, we have to build these really specialized, very sensitive detectors. At this underground lab, Tali Figueroa is monitoring one kind of dark matter detector, a superconducting crystal made from the element germanium. So one of your detectors, huh? Yes, this is a prototype of one of the 30 detectors. And when you look at the surface of our detector, you'll see a metal grid. The grid picks up tiny temperature changes produced when a particle hits the crystal and sets all its atoms vibrating. But to detect those vibrations, the atoms in the crystal have to start out as still as possible, something atoms don't normally like to do. The problem is that naturally, at room temperature, the atoms are vibrating themselves. So how does the team manage to slow down the detector's atoms? They put it in a freezer, a very powerful freezer. So the whole point of this is to simply keep the experiment cold. Yes. We have to keep the experiment at about 50 millikelvin, which is 50 thousandths of a degree above absolute zero. Just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero? Translated into Fahrenheit, that's like 460 degrees below zero. So in other words, it's cold enough so that the air we breathe Freezes solid. Absolutely. And so there's frost everywhere. But now, there's another problem. The frozen detector is so hypersensitive, lots of things could set it off. Like cosmic rays, particles that shower Earth from space. So this is why the whole lab is deep underground. So the bedrock the half a mile of rock above is above, a shield. Is a shield. So the cosmic rays, these are high energy particles from space. From space. Okay, so you're protecting yourself from space. And it's not just cosmic rays. Even underground, there are other tiny particles flitting around us, including photons and neutrons that can fly out of the surrounding rock. So the detectors are cloaked in layer upon layer of shielding all in an effort to filter out everything but the dark matter. And how are things going so far? Okay, how many dark matter particles have you found so far? None. None? None. 
It's not too surprising. The quest for dark matter here on Earth has only just begun. And bigger and more sensitive detectors are already in the works. Still, you might wonder, could it be that dark matter is something that's just out there in space and not down here with us? Astrophysicist Richard Massey says, not likely. He's got the first ever 3D dark matter maps to back him up. But how do you map the unseeable? So we can't see dark matter directly. It's completely invisible. But we can work out where it is by its effects on the ordinary matter that we can see. In other words, you can see dark matter's gravity. But that's because, according to Einstein and nearly a century of experiments, what gravity does in the universe is bend space. Massive objects like the sun actually bend and stretch the contours of space. That's what keeps smaller objects like Earth in orbit. And if space is bent, so is any light that passes through it. So let's debunk the whole idea that light travels in straight lines. Light travels in what it thinks are straight lines. And uh, because space is warped and bent, even the straight lines that light rays travel along are actually bent themselves. The phenomenon is called gravitational lensing. Think of what a thick magnifying glass can do to the text of a book. When we put a magnifying glass in front of it, we start seeing a distorted image. And gravitational lensing to find dark matter works in a very similar way. A huge clump of dark matter and the enormous gravity it creates would bend areas of space so much, it would act like a giant cosmic lens, distorting our view of distant galaxies. The more distortion, the more gravity. And, Massey assumes, the more dark matter lies between them and us. So the final result is that we end up having this map of where the dark matter is in the universe. Maps such as these are now revealing that galaxies like ours are completely enveloped by giant clouds of dark matter. Wherever there's ordinary matter, so even here, there is some dark matter. It's, it's everywhere. The two really have gone together hand in hand. In fact, as the universe evolved after the Big Bang, dark matter may have served as a kind of cosmological glue that over time helped pull stars together to form galaxies. We owe everything to dark matter in two ways. Firstly, it, it holds the whole universe together, but then it also, crucially inside that, it forms this scaffolding in which the ordinary matter can later grow. Well, we are so lucky to have dark matter because we wouldn't even be here otherwise. It was the gravitational attraction from dark matter that pulled together this diffuse gas that eventually formed our Milky Way galaxy that we live in. And if there were no dark matter, then our galaxy would in fact never have formed. If that's true, then it's not just our Milky Way. Across the universe, none of the billions of galaxies out there would have formed without the gravity of this mysterious stuff. Now, we just need to find out what it is. It's really astonishing that there's five times more stuff out there than we know of, and that we've been at this as a community for over 70 years, and yet it might be now, in the next few years, that we'll figure it all out. It's, it's just incredible. Do you like free stuff? How about free Nova stuff? Just email us, nova at wgbh.org, with the subject line, free stuff, and include your address and contact info. The first five people to contact us will receive a free Nova DVD. For more downloadable episodes, go to pbs.org slash nova slash science now. Thanks for watching Nova Science Now.